Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome back to some more Heritage Minutes. Now we've just been checking out a whole range of these and their historical figures and historical events and overall they're just incredible kind of movie one minute segments and so I'm just keen to check out some more. So let's see what we've got. We're starting out with Jeannie Trout, which was a recommended one and I'm fairly sure I've got a couple of other recommended ones, but we'll just see what we can get out of these. Here we go. Send them home! Get rid of them! Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. And so, this organ which I regret I cannot name because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex. Right. Who, although they are married, could not possibly endure... <laughs> Get them out. This is Ginny. Patience. Get them out! Dr. McFarlane! Mrs. Trout. There's no place for women in a medical school. Yeah. Yeah. Get them out! 1871. If you do not bring this classroom under control, I am going to repeat every word of this disgusting lecture to your charming wife. My friend Jenny Trout was not the only woman to face this kind of thing in medical school. But she would become the first woman licensed to practice medicine Damn. in Canada. There we go. Now obviously they just came a whole well of information into one minute and they're kind of, there's a few assumptions that have to be made and then obviously they also tell you a few things but no, from the fact that they were just kind of obviously having to face a very uphill battle in 1871 to become medical practitioners I guess is the only way to really pull it. I mean I can only imagine that it would be a very similar way to as a doctor would be now, a GP or any kind of medical practitioner but I'm just wondering is this actually just based off a true story or not because I guess I can certainly believe that it would be a true story but either way the fact that they I can only assume something along these lines definitely would have been faced like I said an uphill battle you know the guy just goes oh you know these what did he say he said something very very particular because of the presence of these members of the weaker sex yes that's exactly what I was kind of thinking along those lines to be saying that it's like the members of the weaker sex to be honest it's just kind of unfathomable because I don't know if you said anything like that especially in kind of a educational setting these days you'd be fired on the spot and so wow it's honestly incredible and even just at the end of the video they say but she would become the first woman licensed to practice medicine yeah so the first woman licensed to practice medicine i mean that would have been a massive deal i mean i can only assume that her uphill battle wouldn't have ended with the classroom because uh, i guess just culturally there might have been a massive resistance towards the entire idea but i guess if nothing else there probably would have been just a massive gap in the entire thing like i don't know where women would have been going to but obviously if they go oh wow i can actually go to a female if that's what i'm more comfortable a female medical practitioner then that's just great and really I can only assume that just takes a person with that kind of mindset that drive they know what they want and they just go hang on a second no 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 this is just not how things are going to be running anymore I'm coming in here and I'm just shaking up the entire scene but anyway moving on to our second one we have Laura Sakura another one where I have no idea obviously every single one of these I have no idea about and I just learn on the spot but let's just see what we've got In June of 1813, Laura Secord overheard the secret plans of the American soldiers in occupation. If you raise your what? sword against Fitzgibbon, Upper Canada will be broken. How many men can we muster? 500 infantry, battery of artillery, my dragoons. Fitzgibbon can't manage more than 50 men, small band of natives. Not a serious resistance if um, you're equal to the enterprise. Pursue the advance two days hence. Wow. What is going on? Take me to Fitzgibbon. Laura Secord delivered her message to the Canadian troops. The Kanawagi Mohawks forced the surrender of 500 Yankee soldiers and the American invasion was stopped. Oh, wow, that is impressive. Well, here we go. I was really interrupted by ads once again, but no, that is just an insane story. I want to kind of take it back to get a little bit more of the details. So here we go. In June of 1813. 1813, that is pretty incredible. Obviously, the last one we had was 1871, and so I feel as though so far we're having some even earlier ones. I feel as though the last ones we checked out were like the 1920s to 1950s, and then before that, I can't exactly remember, but all of these are like really early ones in terms of history. And then from there, how many troops are there? I heard 500, but... Laura Secord overheard the secret plans of the American soldiers in occupation. I never knew the Americans even ever had kind of a war, or I guess attacked, or I really don't know what to call it, but I never knew that they had any kind of internal conflict with the entire North America. Upper Canada will be broken. 
Okay, so he just says against North Canada, and so I don't know if the entire thing was more segregated, maybe it was before, it was kind of an entire federation of states or whatever you want to call it. How many men can we muster? 500 infantry, battery of artillery, my dragoons. It's good we can manage more than 50 men, small band of natives. Wow, so they, man, okay, so going from that to the end of the video where they say they forced 500 men to surrender, that's incredible. I don't even know how you kind of do that with those numbers anyway, but I guess it just really shows you the power of knowledge, you know, whether it be a modern day war and you're just kind of mining data or you're just kind of in the 1817 and you're just like, hang on a second, I know you're coming, so I'm going to set up here, but I'm going to make you think that I'm here and then we're just going to completely either wipe you out or make you surrender and clearly both of those tactics or I guess one of them was actually just carried out in the end but either way I can only assume that it's a very much a dramatization but I'd love to know if she got a message to them did she run all that way they kind of made it seem as though she just went on a massive trip across the country were kind of running from these guys was going over mountains and then obviously I don't know if she was found or what you know I'm sure there's gaps in the story we either way considering it's 1817 it's hardly like they've got a GPS tracker on her but either way the fact that she just even overheard I would love to know where she overheard the American troops because was she a nurse so or I really don't know either way the entire thing is just crazy it's because really even though I always say that all of these one minute things kind of feel like movies I feel as though this is the stuff that full length feature films are made of and so I don't know if they ever have made a full length feature film but that is just a story for the ages I'd love to know just the distance she traveled and really if she was ever kind of given the credit for it or what because man obviously just kind of winning the war or whatever you want to call it it's generally a pretty big deal now here we go moving on to our third one I just was scrolling through and I saw flags that's kind of sounds interesting I'd love to know a little bit more of the heritage about the entire flag or how it was created and so here we are so let's see what we've got you won't believe some of these proposals look at this one and this Wow. Now this is what I wanted from the start. But Mike Pearson wants this. Well, he is the Prime Minister. But blue is not an official Canadian colour. Fair enough. Meanwhile, John Diefenbaker and the Tories want this. What is that? You know, the only way I'll ever get the whole committee together is to persuade my Liberals to reject, reject their own Prime Minister's choice. Well, the Tories will agree to that at least. Is there one design here that the whole committee can agree on that says Canada? No mistake about it. I wonder. I wonder. Prime Minister and Mr. Diefenbaker, I was just talking about you. Are we, uh, are we all going to the same party? Amazingly, John Matheson MP would achieve the unanimity he sought. There we go. I just want to quickly take that back to, it was only a couple of seconds. Here we go. So February 15, 1965 was when it was raised, or I don't know if that includes kind of, oh, I don't even know what you call it, just so kind of submitted or officialized or whatever you want to say. But either way, yeah, I can only imagine, I don't know who would have been approached in terms of all of the different proposals, but you can just look at that. That is so random. That looks more tribal, to be honest, which is pretty cool. And then we had this one, which just looks like, I don't know, something out of Mass Effect. And then that one, it's actually probably the closest I can only assume I wonder if these are kind of real propositions that they had or if kind of it's just general illustrations that whoever made this video just has come up with and then in terms of this next one yeah here we go the blue I was going oh that looks weird and even he said oh blue is another Canadian car so we can't have that and so yeah I can only assume there would have been a mountain of flags to go through because realistically if you are the designer that has been acknowledged as kind of designing the flag that is still running today it's going to be a massive kind of legacy thing regardless if you kind of want to do it for money if there was any kind of reward I don't know but either way just the fact that you went yes that is my flag that is flying on every single official thing ever and yeah I just can't be prouder and so yeah just that's incredible I mean I guess the only kind of gripe I have with the entire video is we never get to know or I never know what this guy's name is it kind of just talks about the flags which makes sense considering the entire title is called flags but I would also like to know is this a specific guy that just went you know no we don't want this or we don't want this you know even at the start of the video it says flag committee room 1964 and then he's even talking about I'm fairly sure he talked about his party either way there's just a whole one of kind of nuanced things that he talks about that I just have absolutely no idea about and so perhaps some people will be able to enlighten me in the comments but either way no that was just an incredible thing you never really think about all the effort and just oh the amount of time that goes into just designing and then making and then approving a flag because you've got to get it right you don't want to be changing it every single year that's for sure and so now coming to our final one for today we have Wilder Wilder Penfield this I'm fairly sure was another recommended one and so I guess let's just see what we've got so not today so, for Toast is burning. Toast is not. 
power stroke. <laughs> I've heard that. She has a seizure. She smells something burning. Now, if we can provoke that smell by probing the surface of the brain, what? we'll find the source of the seizures. What? Mrs. Gold, do you feel anything? I can see the most wonderful lights. What is going on? And now, what do you feel? Did you pour cold water on my hand, Dr. Penfield? Oh. Now what? Uh, what is it, Mrs. Gold? Burnt toast. Dr. Burnt Penfield, toast. I can smell burnt toast. Dr. Wilder Penfield. He cured my seizures and hundreds more. They say he drew the roadmap of the human brain. We just wow. called him the greatest Canadian alive. That's insane. I had no idea what I was walking into with that one, but I certainly, either way, I don't think I ever would have been ready to just kind of see what we saw just then. I mean, oh, no, there we go. Um, just taking it back to the start here, though. I really didn't have any idea where it was going to be going. You know, I was like, okay, I can understand. Maybe it's going to be some science or some stroke victim. I mean, I did vaguely remember hearing about kind of burnt toast and people smelling things. And so I went, oh, okay, well, he goes kind of, oh, what are you talking about? There's no burnt toast. And she goes, oh, and then obviously collapse. I go, oh, that must be a stroke. But no, I had no clue that anything that invasive had ever been carried out, especially on stroke victims. I mean, I feel as though, obviously, well, <laughs> quite clearly, the brain is a very fragile thing, and I would love to know if the kind of probes or whatever they had on that entire thing were kind of a realistic recreation. Because I guess, I mean, I'm certainly no doctor, but I can certainly understand how if they're trying to, I guess, literally prod and probe for the right connection within the brain, whatever that might be. Like, if we go, here we go. What is this called? Uh... Toast. Oh, there we go. So that was a burnt toast one. But no, there was a couple of other things that she smelled. And she went, oh, wow. So you're just making all these random connections. And of course, the brain's just incredible like that. You're never really actually receiving anything. The brain just goes, oh, yeah, I'm making these connections. And this is what it smells like. And so to be able to kind of just conjure up these random things, right? Just literally just poking and prodding around in there. That's insane. And I have no idea where you would ever even begin to kind of start with that entire process. Like, how do you go, you know what? I'm going to just kind of make a hole here and just start poking and just see what happens. Like, Surely you can't just kind of present that to a medical board and go, yeah, that's the kind of thing that I want to be starting out with. And really, when was it though? Oh. 1934 so in Montreal. And so I guess it's not as late as, so I get like, it's not as early as some of the ones we've seen today. But either way, 1934... I don't really know if I'd be kind of be trusting any kind of medical practitioner to be chopping over my head in 1934 to then go in there and be poking around. I mean, obviously strokes and all those in kind of thing. Oh no, was it strokes? No, it was seizures, he actually said. But either way, the entire thing just sounds like an absolute nightmare in terms of just safety. And I don't even know how you'd ever deal with that. And obviously I can only assume there's a whole bundle of waivers that were signed. But man, this guy, hopefully I can get him. This guy right here, what an absolute just, I guess, brainiac in some regards. But what do they call him? of the human brain. We just called him the greatest Canadian alive. There we go, the greatest Canadian alive. I mean, hey, we have certainly seen plenty of incredible people, but that is just another one to add to the list because, like I said, I just have no idea how you even kind of conjure up that idea to even know where to start, to even know that that's even possibly going to work. And so, man, just hats off to this guy. I mean, literally, in some regards, in terms of what he was doing, hats and lids off, if you want to say that much, because given the fact that they say this... They say he drew the roadmap of the human brain. I can certainly say that I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but Will the Penfield, that is certainly just a name to remember because that is an incredible human right there. But no, I feel as though that's just a great kind of way to wrap it up. You know, we started with the medical industry and now we've finished with the medical industry over, actually, I think it was about, what, a hundred year differential there. And yes, we also had flags in there, which was interesting. And we also had an incredible kind of story that I said just could be a movie. And so just like the last ones, the people that comment to these ones, just absolutely incredible choices because, I mean, obviously there's so much history, like I always say, but man, you've definitely chosen the right snippers to kind of learn about because every single one of these people have just been incredible and so yeah i just would love to know more if you've got any that you just go yes you have to watch this or i'll just try and check them out next but anyway in saying that i reckon i'm going to call it there so thank you for watching this episode of heritage minutes if you did enjoy it make sure to do the youtube algorithmic things down below also if this is the first video mind that you're watching then make sure to check out some of the other ones you know we've done heritage minutes before we've done international videos before and then also make sure to check out all the original videos in the description below or hey maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future but all in all have a good one and see ya